Yes, I got. See with me a great. Is a God. Oh, we see a great. A great is a God. A great, yes, Lord, is a God. Sing with me a great. Is a God. And all we see a great. How great is a God. You are the name above all names. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy of my praise. I will sing to you. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great, yes, Lord, is our God. Sing with me a great is a god because all we sing a great yes lord how great it is a god you are the name of all names you are worthy of my praise and my heart will sing how great is our God. It's to each is calm. Time is in his hands. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. The goal had three in one. He the Father, Spirit, and the Son. The lion and the lamb. He's a lion and the lamb. How great is our God. See with me a great. It's our God. And all we sing a great. How great is our God. The lion of the tribe of Judah. You are so great. You are so mighty. You are worthy of my praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the worship. Here we are one more time with God. To come to your presence. Where there is fullness of joy and pleasure. For those who acknowledge you. Who accept you and walk in your counsel. Reveal yourself to us O God. Because by the entrance of your word. Brings understanding. Establish us in your divine grace that we may live to know your will. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beloved, you are welcome one more time to End Time Holiness Teachings. My name is Brother Gabriel. It's always a great favor and a great opportunity, a special grace that the Lord had bestowed upon my life. To be part of this end time ministers or ministry who are equipping the saints and uh, helping the saints to come to their uh, level of maturity. Apostle Paul made us aware that in the church, the Lord God allowed or established. He allowed the Holy Spirit to give gifts to men. And some of these men, they were called the apostles. Some were called prophets. Some were called teachers. Some were called pastors. And some were called evangelists. In other words, in the body of Christ, which is the church, Yesterday, we spoke about a metaphoric name that the Bible called we Christians. Yesterday, we talked about being the bride of Christ. And we were not able to give into details who a bride is. But I wish uh, today 
my intention was to take us into another level but i think i want to go back to the bride again when we say a bride when we say a bride a bride is a proposed wife to be a woman that is going to be married to a man it is in the proposal it is in the making we have not become the wife yet he has not wedded us yet we are in the making we are in the making and therefore since we are in the making yesterday i made a scenario or an example where one of your schoolmates can cause a big problem to cause you not know, to fulfill that proposed relationship assuming that you are not living in the same environment with a man who wants to come and marry you your future husband your future husband to be honest with you growing up in the village i had so many elderly women young girls and girls of my age group that's one way or the other everybody was saying that i am your husband i remember one sister sister mary she was elderly she was one of my cousin's friend another time she comes to her house she asks where is my husband so growing up you have all kinds of people calling you husband husband in a classroom you went to school and you have school i mean we all had it one way or the other isn't it? yes if you never have it then maybe you didn't live in a village or in an area where children are being going through all kinds of things that they introduce the future to us in an unseeming manner sometimes we are not ready for it yet it is being proposed to us so this lady will always say, where is my husband? Whenever I see her, I just run. I was feeling shy. I didn't understand what marriage is all about. Yet this one was being introduced. Going to school, from elementary school, from the elementary school, you also come across some of your schoolmates that you play up. This is my wife. We have all these things in mind. But to be honest with you, none of those numbers <laughs> became my wife when I became my child to marry. So in other words, you can say it, but it will never be fulfilled. There are very few people that started from childhood and played that game that you're going to be my husband, grew up with our one of my mates, that when we came to like uh in a, in a in a higher school level they eventually became wife and husband gave birth but it never also amounted to anything so that childhood that childhood thing doesn't mean anything some of us here on earth we are in the childhood process christianity is in the childhood process we are becoming matured so apostle paul said in ephesians chapter 4 that in the church he has established all these leaders that are educating the church that are educating the bride that are educating the tribe the lamb the wife of the, 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 the lamb we are there to equip us with divine knowledge we are there to equip us with a divine understanding for us to know who we are. A child, so long as he is uneducated, he might be a prince, but he doesn't suffer to be like a, 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 a slave. Understand this because it will help you. Know who you are, talking about spiritual warfare or the battle, Christian battle. Yesterday we established that before we can assume success or we can count on our success, there are certain things that we need to understand who we are. 
we must know who we are and we must know why we are here and we must know what to do and we must know how to do it hmm. we all have questions and every question comes with who what how where these questions are the questions of our eternal salvation Mm. Let me pick it from Matthew the chapter number 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto virgins, which took lambs, went forth to meet the bridegroom, which took but the wise took oil in their vessel with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Ten virgins. Ten virgins. This is one of the parables that Jesus gave. A way that the Lord explained the Bible to us in a language that was very difficult to understand. Matthew 25 says about the five wise virgin and the five foolish virgins mind you all of them were aspiring to become the husband to the bridegroom all of them had prepared but how many of them became the wives that is a question that you need to ask yourself you can be in a church talk about that tomorrow god's willing I've prepared for that, but when I sat here, the Lord said, no. You can be in the church, yet you are not ready to become the wife of the bridegroom. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered, they all became tired, they all fell asleep. Things that will cause us to fall asleep are bound to come at all times. What are the things that cause us to fall asleep? When we overeat, <laughs> when we are not active, when we are tired, when we overwork ourselves, when we don't have enough rest, we become tired and we fall asleep. Are you resting in the bosom of the lamp? Are you having enough rest? Or you are just up and down? Where is your mind? Are you having rest? And our rest should be in the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Depending upon his promises, trusting upon his promises, relying upon his promises, give us rest. We can only have rest and proper rest. This rather we are talking about here wasn't bad rest. Because the bridegroom was delaying. He was tarried. We don't know. He has not given us the time that he is coming. He has not given us the time. He said, I am coming. He never said it specifically at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. No. No specific time was given. Therefore, we can't say that he's delaying. He's working in his own time. And that is where you and me need to build up our minds. That we can go before he comes. Or he will come and meet us here. He can call us home. Or he will come and meet us here. And in the midnight there was a cry made. Very soon that midnight cry is going to be sounded. Very soon. Behold the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Then all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. That is what the problem was. They arose. Nothing was wrong. But the lamps. Why lamp? Bible said the Christians, the ecclesia, the set aside, the call out. We are the light of this world. They trim their lamp. And they found out that there is not enough oil to sustain them. During the whole and the entire uh, marriage supper. Jesus given this parable was clearly understood by the 
ancient Jews who were living in that time because that was the practices in those days. They used to conduct their wedding ceremonies from day to night. And it can happen at any time. So when you are going, you need to take a lantern. You need to take a lamp along with you. And that lamp is your Christian salvation. You are the light. Whenever you become a born again believer, your spirit is lighted up by the Holy Spirit that comes to dwell in you. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you, then you must be able to shine like a light. If your light is not shining, then you are not. We shine in this perverse world. We shine in this dark world. Why? Because we are the light of this world. We are the light. Light don't hide their rails or their, 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 their lights. You can't hide it. In darkness is where we need the light. Are you a Christian? What are you portraying shows who you are? Understand who you are. And you will not struggle to become who you are. The day you and me will understand that we are the light of this world. We will never struggle anymore. Some of us are going through all kinds of stress. To cut a long story short, as most of us, we know the parable of the ten virgins. They demanded, the foolish one asked the wise ones, can you give us some of the oil? And they said, well, we are very sorry. We have the oil that had been arranged for this particular ceremony. Listen to me, there is a key here, I want to give it to you. Your salvation and my salvation doesn't work together. We can be saved in the same place, but each one is on his or her own way. My prayer cannot sustain you in this battle. My prayer cannot sustain you. They came to them, the wise, and said, please give us some of your oil because ours have run out. Matthew chapter 25. And the foolish said unto the wife, verse 8, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wife answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. That is where Christianity has fallen. Number one, some of us, we don't know that we needed oil. Number two, we don't have even money to go and buy. Number three, we don't know those who are selling the proper oil. So we go to everywhere and buy them. And they are not sustaining our lamp to shine. Where do you service? Which church do you go? What kind of groups do you fellowship with? Oh, they can preach very well. Oh, really? That's not bad. Are you sure what you are preaching is going to promote you to make heaven? Are you sure? Ragibra, I'm not sure. How can I be sure? You can't be sure only when you have the intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. For that one, you know it. If that intimacy is there, nobody can forge it. Nobody can forge that intimacy. Nobody. Somebody might try to hinder things. Somebody might try to change things. Somebody might try. But no one can hinder that. Understand it because it will make a huge impact in your life. But the point that I want to raise here is the oil that you need to wait for the bridegroom. You can't borrow that oil from somebody. Oh, Pastor, pray for us, oh. Pastor, pray for me, oh. Sister, oh, I am praying for you. I am praying for you, darling. It might be true, but it wouldn't be sufficient. Your Christian life must be led in such a way that you're constantly aware of who you are, why you are here, what you've been called to do, how you must do it, and where. Will you end up with those words? Understand that. All the virgin 
queens were ready and waiting for the bridegroom. But unfortunately, their light wasn't enough to sustain them in that dark hour. Therefore, they had to go and buy. And immediately they left, their groom came. Understand that. Understand that. In John chapter 3, verse 29, Jesus said, He that had the bride is the bridegroom. But a friend to the bridegroom who standeth and heareth him rejects. Rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. Beloved, we need not to become the friends of the bridegroom. We must become the wife of the bridegroom. Understand that. Understand that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 Christ is preparing that he may present us to himself. That he may present us. Now the question is, what if when he comes and he can't marry us? Is there anything in your life that would disqualify you from becoming the bridegroom, the bride of Christ? What are some of the qualities of the bride? The bride dresses like the groom. The bride soaked like a groom. The bride behaves like a groom. The bride had the mindset like the groom. Everything, they had a future with the groom. He had a future. He had a future. And because he's thinking of the, she is thinking of the future, she is always preparing herself and making herself ready. Understand this because it will change much of your life. Romans, uh, First Corinthians chapter number, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter eleven, two Corinthians eleven. Please let's read something from the verse one, two, three, four. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealous. For I suppose you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But if I fear least by enemies, are the serpent beguiled if through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So that your mind will be corrupted. What the enemy can do to the bridegroom. That the bride is that her mind will be corrupted. When we say something is corrupted, it loses its taste, it loses its value, it loses its importance, and it becomes useless. What can corrupt the bride? Sin. Sin. Satan. That set the bride attention from herself. Take the bride attention from the husband to herself. Focus on yourself. Think about yourself, not on your husband. But I believe in the relationship. We don't think about ourselves. We think about our spouse. How can I make her happy? How can I make him happy? That is the best relationship. How can I make her fulfill her destiny? What can I do to improve upon her life? The quality life that my spouse will live needs to be my priority i was supposed to say that i'm afraid that the simplicity in this word will not cause your mind to deflect for if he that cannot preach another jesus whom we have not preached for if you receive another spirit which have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted Ye may well bear with me. Apostle Paul was saying that he was afraid of some people bringing another testimonies that will cause the bride to deflect. Another gospel, another teachings that tells you that your husband will accept you in this way. Your husband will accept you the way you are. It's not true. When I was a little boy, I saw a young woman and I look at her posture. 
I look at her and I say, wow, I wish my wife would have such a figure. Why should I deserve that? I never knew that it was inside of me. I came across so many, but none of them attracted me. None of them attracted my picture inside of me. You may say that, so um, did you choose? No. I prayed. I didn't know that it was a prayer. And the person that God gave to me as my wife had a similar figure that I so desire. What are we talking about? God created us and he has some kind of natural desires in us. They are natural. They are natural. And they click. So when God brings you into that, you must have the inner picture that reflects on the bride and the bridegroom. Many have been forced to marry for all kinds of reasons, not of love. And I beg to you, we've been called to love. We've been called to love. And the fact that we don't have some natural reflection on our innermost quest causes us a whole kind of troubles. You might not be happy with your natural relationship. Either you didn't pray to God or you had it just like that without thinking about the natural desires that can influence those things. Let me take you out of the natural. Jesus Christ has proposed us to himself. He is coming to take us to where he is. He wants to wake up early in the morning together with us. He wants to spend the whole day with us. Can we meet that? Mind you, the reason why many people go into divorce is that they marry to people they don't love. They marry to people they don't love. If you love the person, no matter what a person does, you still like her or love him. Love never goes to an end. The love that God has placed upon us, the love that we have towards our parents, the love that we have towards our brothers and sisters, siblings, the love that we have towards our friends, and the love that we are supposed to have towards our spouse shouldn't go to an end. Should always remain intact. Why? Because it is natural and it is born out of the nature of God. Some of us have lost our parents and yet we know or we think or we feel that they are not dead yet. I was talking to one sister that said she loved her mother so much so well that even the mother dead over 10 years now, she still feels that the mom is alive. Why can't we feel the same thing towards our spouse? If we are able to forgive other people, we can forgive every person and stay at peace with all men. There is a battle. And when our love, the standard of our love, when it is broken, we destroy. Our strength is in our love. Today, I want to take you into a different level. The reason why there is all kinds of battle is our loving relationship are not well programmed or well not are not well positioned most of the battle that we lose in life we lose it because our loving relationship is not strong a person will go insane when she feels that nobody loves him or her a person will go to depression when she doesn't feel loved one of the greatest weapons that Satan uses to fight against humanity is the power of love. You have, you might have not considered it. The power of love. Who shows you love? Who embraces you? Who tells you that he loves you? I was supposed that I am afraid that somebody else will come and give you a false love. False gospel, false prophet, they are giving false love. You don't understand. False love. False love. I mean, there are some people that you naturally love them, but never they never became your wives. I have some mates that naturally you have natural affection, not lust. Natural affection that you like them. 
You want to talk to them. You love to have them around. You love to see them. But there is nothing like sexual relationship should go on in between you. Some of us, the reason why we are struggling, that we were not able to differentiate those type of feeling that we have towards others. You can't jump into bed with any person. You can't jump into bed with any person. You must be able to differentiate and know the quality of a person that you want to spend your entire life with. You can't jump in bed with Satan and still think that you are being proposed to Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ is going through stress. The bride of Christ is going through all kinds of problems because she is not committed to her husband. She is not settled in her mind. She is not settled. Since my gospel, the chapter number 2, the verse 19 to 20, Jesus said this. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the broad chamber fast? While the bridegroom is with them, as long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they shall then they shall fast. It's one of my uncle's uh, quotation. My uncle's wife asked him, "Husband, are you not fasting today?" And he says, "So long as the bridegroom is here, we are not going to fast." <laughs> Jesus was talking, I mean, uh, there were some guys that came and uh, the Pharisees that questioned Jesus, why is his disciple not fasting? I said, so long as the bridegroom is there, they will not fast. Today, the bridegroom is not here, we need to fast. Starve ourselves from lust of this world. Starve ourselves from the things. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the world because that is where the bride is coming from. The bride is taken out of the world. Where the prince of this world has blindfolded him. Where the prince of this world have taken much things from him. And therefore the bride is being instructed to distance himself from his past. Jeremiah the chapter number 2 verse 2. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying that says the Lord. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy espousal. When thy want us after me in wilderness in the land of which there was no soul. The Lord said that he knew us in love. The affection that God has for us is affection of eternal love. Mm -hmm. In Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 8, talking about Israel, say, when I pass by thee, I look unto thee. Behold, Thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirts over thee, covered thy nakedness, yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. See the Lord God, and thou became mine. Are you his property? Becoming the property of your bride, becoming a property of the bridegroom, is what this all Christianity is about. And so we come to that level to understand where we need to come. Where are we being called into? Understand that you are the bride of Christ. And as a bride, you need to live your life in accordance with the will of God. He is coming for a church without wrinkles and without blemish. The relationship that Jesus have with the church is set forth. Is set forth before we were created, and He gave us this metaphor as we being the bride and uh, He being the bridegroom. In John, the chapter number three, verse twenty-nine, let's hear what Jesus. The Savior said, John chapter 3, the verse number 29, the Lord said this, Understand your understanding concerning these spiritual things which bring all kind of less stress. John 3, 29, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom stands by and listens for him. 
and it's of a joy to hear the bridegroom voice. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. Do you know that you belong to him? What does it mean that something belongs to somebody? Belonging, we belong to him. We are his property. And because we are his, we can't use ourselves the way we want. We can only use ourselves the way he wants. Understand that. Because it will change many things in your life. Understand this. You and me cannot do what we want. You and me cannot watch what we want. You and me cannot behave the way we want. Why? Because he had purchased us with a price. He had purchased us with a price. Although we are in the betrothed level, we are in the engagement level. He has not wedded us yet. However, we need to know every day that we belong to him. We belong to him. And he has assigned us for a day that he will rejoice with us eternally. Therefore, let us keep ourselves away from anything that will contaminate this relationship. Therefore, let us do everything possible to avoid, to avoid, to avoid. Every day, we need to live our lives as we belong to him. Every day, we need to live our lives that when he appears, we shall be like him. We don't know what we shall be, but one thing that we know is when he comes, we shall be like him. Let me use this few. Uh, let's go back to the book of First uh, Corinthians. First Corinthians, the chapter number fifteen, chapter fifty. Uh, sorry, chapter sixteen. And let's do some few verses here, which I believe I want us to establish on what can I do to maintain my relationship. What can I do? What can I do? Um, let's read something from the verse number 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quite you like man, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Five things here. If you and me want to maintain our stand, as a bride and wait for his appearance. Number one, we must be watchful. The grace of God must be accompanied with watchfulness. And let's be ready. Careful. Don't exceed. Be careful. Don't overcome. Don't overlook your watchfulness. Be alert. Be alert. Watch. Because you don't know the time and the hour that the Lord will come. Watch. Because your adversary, the devil, he is rolling like a lion, looking for whom he may get to devour. Watch. 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 His attention. Taking a very strong attention on who you are. Be watchful. Apostle Paul said this thing. Number two. In order to maintain our state or standard for our bridegroom to come and meet us, we need to stand fast. Hold fast. Hold firm. Stand firm. We need to have stability. To stand means stand. Ephesians chapter 4, 6. Talk about that. Having put on the whole armor of God, stand. Stand. The one that is standing must be very careful that he doesn't fall. Stand. We are instructed to stand where? Stand in the faith. Stand fast in the faith which we have confessed and that has brought us the salvation. Stand in your faith. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord that he will come for you. 
Trust in him that your holiness and your righteousness will be rewarded. Trust in him that everything that he has said, he will do it. Faith is built on trust, assurance, and knowledge that will bring us that kind of relying upon him. Stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in your confession. Stand means be committed. Be committed to what you have said that you want to do. There are many of us, we can't stay committed. We think we want to do it, and we can't stay committed. Lack of commitment causes us to lose our salvation. Be committed. In the book of Ruth, the other time we read, that when Naomi saw that Ruth had determined that she want to go with her. She stopped disturbing her. Until Satan will know that you have determined to make heaven. He will not stop worrying you. And how can I know that I am determined? I said in my Bible. I pray. And I don't struggle to live as a Christian. There are so many Christians who have struggled to live as a Christian. Pastor pray for me oh, that I can live as a Christian. I don't, you don't need my prayer to live as a Christian. If you're a Christian, you don't struggle to live as a Christian. If you're a born-again believer, what's up? Doesn't have anything to give apart from what's up. Mango tree has nothing to give apart from mango fruits. Banana tree has nothing to give apart from banana fruits. You give the fruits of your kind. Stop warning people up and stop deceiving people. That you are a Christian. Yet when people approach you, you are not a Christian. When people approach you, you are not. What comes out of you? In a multitude, stop, stop, stop. Excuse me. Excuse me of saying this. Please excuse me of my language. Let us all come to the level that excuse is enough. We have had an enough excuse. When we stand before the Lord, there is no excuse for misbehavior and misconduct. Stand firm on your faith. Follow Jesus Christ. Imitate him. Copy him. Stand firm. Quiet like a man. Behave like a man. There are so many problems in Christendom. Yesterday I was having a Bible study with a group. And we spoke about these things. When you go to church, bring 10 men. Train them to become Christian. Bring 20 women. Uh, uh, 10 women, train them to become Christians, leave them in the same place for three hours. And when you come back, there is a conflict among them. Three hours. Christian sisters and Christian brothers, we all have the same Holy Spirit. Why are we all not behaving the same? Something is wrong. Here, the mindset. Christian brothers, therefore, was a Paul said, be Quit like a man. Behave. Behave. In Christendom, we don't have male and females. The Holy Spirit dwell. The same Holy Spirit dwelling in my wife. The same Holy Spirit dwelling in me. There is no gender in the spirit. The Spirit of God have saved me. The same Spirit of God have saved my little daughters. Let us stop our mindsets of gender. Let us start the mindsets of culture. And we are the whites, we are the blacks. This is foolishness. There is nothing like that. The same Holy Spirit that is using the black man should behave if the same Holy Spirit is living in a white man. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And that is where I am saying that we are baffling. We have not come to know him yet. The day we become like him, the day we know him, we behave like him. We would suck like him and we think like him. The church is struggling because the church has not conformed. And uh, Oh my dear. He is not conformed into the bridegroom. Conforming into the bridegroom is where we need to end. That is where the problem is. So you bring Church of Pentecost members, bring Baptist church members, Bring assemblies of God members. They all call themselves Christians. Give them the same Bible to read. Your different reaction will come out of them. They call something doctrine. 
Oh, recently the Lord was asking me to teach on Bible doctrine. What Christian doctrine is about. Which every born again believer. Number one. There are certain things that must be straightforward. The doctrines of salvation must be the same. The doctrines of forgiveness of sin must be the same. The doctrine of the baptism must be the same. The doctrine of the baptism of the Holy Spirit must be the same. Every doctrine should be the same. Why? Because they are all coming from the same Bible. Why are we not the same in teaching and the same in purpose? We are not in the same because we have fake. We have fake. The original will always remain the original. If I am preaching holiness and somebody is in America preaching holiness, if somebody is in uh, uh, Africa, Asia, preaching the same message, then the same message must attract the same people in the same magnitude. Why? Because the whole, the same Holy Spirit working in us. Why are there differences? It's a question that I believe you need to question yourself. Why calling myself a Christian yet I behave different from others? Why? Why? We must be. This morning I was going to drop my wife at work. And I asked her, when are you starting? She said, I'm supposed to start at 7 o'clock. I said, what is the time now? 10 past. Until you reach there, it's 20 past. She said, well, I mean, anytime I reach there, it's when I book. I said, when did they book you? She said, 7 o'clock. Then I said, you're a Christian, sister. So you must be there 5 to 7. You must be there. When I'm going to work, sometimes I am there 10 to 20 minutes to. Especially when I need to tra travel in a distance. If you are a Christian, you must be the first person over there. You must be the first person. Don't live late. Because there is a blessing in that. Our mindset must be changed. So for five things, be strong. Be watchful. Be like a man. Be like a man. Behave like a man. Christian sister must behave, must think like Christian brothers. I mean Christians. I'm not talking about the worldly. Be strong. Be strong. Strength. Strength comes from the mind. It's not physical. It's strong where? In the Lord and the power of his might. Our strength comes from understanding in whose we have become. Whose we have become. All these things I'm talking about are some characters that the fruit of the Spirit will cause us to develop. Because we are aware of the impending danger, a born-again believer might be strong in prayer. A born-again believer might be strong in studying the Word of God. A born-again believer might be strong, strong here, steadfast. Remain, remain your standard. Don't change, don't reduce your standard the standard in the lord must remain be strong in the lord and the power of his might be strong be strong stay fast stay in in where you are standing hold on to it hold on to it be strong and finally he said let all your things be done in love let all your things be done out of charity you know that we are bright, and uh, being bright, we are called to love. Men and women need to love the same. I don't see the reason why my wife's love should be different from my love towards her. Oh, women can love better. I use that phrase very much, but I don't think it's supposed to be so. I don't believe. I don't believe that a man can go out and marry another woman. I don't believe that a man can go and sleep with another woman. A married man can go and sleep with another woman, but a married woman cannot go and sleep with another man. I don't believe in that. If men can do it, the woman also must be able to do it. So those who are in the world, those who are in the world and you believe that you can go and fornicate, you are not a Christian. A Christian shouldn't think like this. 
Let us come to the level to understand who a Christian is, who a born again believer is. The one that is waiting for the appearance of the Messiah needs to abstain himself from anything that disqualifies him as a bride. Hosea chapter number 2, Hosea chapter 2, verse 16, verse 16 going. And it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall call me no more Bali. For I will take away the names of Balim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and sword and battle out the earth. And I will make them to lie down safely. The Lord's intention is to make a covenant with us. The covenant has not been made yet. So please don't fool around. Do everything in love for God and love for brethren. Stay in touch, stay secured. Stay holy, stay pure. Let your affection be that you want to make heaven. If that is not a reason why you are here, I am afraid. If your reason is not to make heaven, I am afraid. Now let me jump to verse 20. I will even be true thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. I will be truth thee. To be truth means proposal, engage. I will engage with you in my faithfulness, and you shall know me as your Lord. And it shall come to pass that that day I will hear, see as the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say that them which were not my people, thou are my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. These were the prophetic, the prophetic word concerning the Messiah, who was going to reconcile the Gentiles to the Lord. He wants to have mercy with us, and he is willing to. Are you ready to embrace this God? Are you ready to allow him to be the owner of your soul? He said, This is the time of love. You are the bride of Christ. As a bride, we need to make ourselves ready. That when he comes, we will not be disqualified. Please never allow anything to disqualify you becoming the bride of Christ. Because the groom is coming very soon. Let us think like that. Let us single ourselves and give our body, our soul, our spirit, our mind to him alone. We may have friends. We may have relatives. But our marital bed should be only us and our husband. And that husband that I'm talking about is Jesus Christ. Any relationship with the world is like going astray. Something that will destroy our love with God. Stay in love with the Lord. Let your love towards Christ, let your love towards Christ become genuine. Let it become pure. Let her become Stephans and live every day as if he is coming today for you. Live every day as if he is coming today for you. Be careful with the song that you listen to. Be careful with the people that you spend time with. Be careful with friends that you engage with. Some of them, they are not faithful in their marriage. And therefore, you that have been betrothed, be careful the way you live your life. Live every day as if. Live every day as if. That you are waiting for somebody to come and marry you. And you don't want to mess up your life. Don't mess up. What you watch messes you up. What you think messes you up. What you do messes you up. Friendship with this world will become enmity between you and God. Father, here we are one more time. We love you and we celebrate you. Thank you for what you've done and what you are still doing in our life. We present our heart and our mind and our soul to you, O God. We pray that, Lord, you fulfill your plans in us.
accomplish that which you have started. Help us to live for you in understanding and in wisdom. Let us uphold to holiness, righteousness, and set ourselves aside for only you. That you will not disqualify us when you see us. Thank you because you love us. In Jesus' name. I want you to have the same picture that I gave you to yesterday. You have a man that has seen your pictures. The man has just seen your pictures and has expressed love to you. The man wants to come and marry you and bring you to where he is. Be careful that you don't allow anything to come in. Be careful because if you go on playing up around, you may become pregnant. You have never been there before. You will understand what I mean. Many people are crying today. Because the man that proposed to them, intended to marry them, couldn't come and meet them in their maritable states. Therefore, they couldn't become marriage material. It is my prayer, as you and me are waiting on the Lord, we will abstain from anything that disqualifies us to become his children. Christians don't struggle to live a Christian life. If you're struggling in any area of your Christian life, you're not a Christian yet. You're not a Christian yet. Don't deceive yourself. Ask yourself, are you a Christian? What defines you as a Christian? What are the evidence that you're a Christian? If you don't have all these evidence within you, I'm afraid. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. May this word continue to sink into your hearts. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Surrender all your foolishness unto him and allow him to be the owner of your soul. That when he comes, you and me will have a better place to dwell eternally with him. Until we meet again, my name is Brother Gabriel. I love you and God bless you. Amen.